Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. And today we are going to talk about AWS Event Bridge. Uh, we understand how this service works and um, uh, how we can do Python programming with Event Bridge to publish uh, the messages. So let's get a, a slight understanding about how uh, what Event Bridge is and how it works. So Event Bridge is a serverless event bus which can be used to create a published subscribe based uh, messaging engine. And if you try to understand some of the key components of the Event Bridge, uh, to start with, uh, the central point of the Event Bridge is a um, bus, uh, is an event bus. And, and it comes with a default event bus, but you can create your custom event bus, you can uh, create event bus for your partners. The purpose of the event bus is to be a place where messages can be published. So as I mentioned earlier, it is based on pub and sub model. That means there will be certain sources or certain services which will publish the message to the event bus. And there will be certain subscriber to the event bus who will be uh, willing to receive the message based on sometimes the source of the message or content of the message. Um, or, or many other parameters like that. So the, the key uh, and, and the central point of the event bus, event bridge is uh, event bus where you, uh, you know people publish the message. Okay. Then the next important thing is source. Now source are the services uh, which publish matches to, to the event bus. And your sources could be anything. Your sources could be your AWS services. So any of the AWS services you think of, like say Lambda, EC2, any of those services can publish messages to the event bus. Um, you can also go and create a custom application to uh, publish messages to the event bus. And in this case, in fact, you're going to write a Python application which will simply uh, publish a message to the event bus. And you can also integrate um, uh, SaaS applications. So you can also integrate uh, some partner solutions and, and, and those partner solutions can also uh, publish the, uh, publish the uh, messages to the event bus. So source are the services or the applications um, uh, partner solutions which can publish the message to the event bus. The next part is, uh, so you have seen the event bus, you have seen the sources who are publishing the message. Now comes the part where you consume the message. So once uh, messages are published to the event bus, then you can create multiple rules. And uh, these rules are then used to route the message to more than one subscriber. Uh, one or more subscriber, I mean. So uh, your rule could be based on the source of the message. It could be based on the content of the message. There are various ways uh, or type of the service. Uh, you, you can really create um, your messages and uh, your, 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 your routing rules in many ways. And the purpose of the writing routing rule is that when a message comes in, uh, it simply evaluates the message and uh, and the uh, rules uh, rules uh, then see that okay uh, based on the rules configuration where this message should be routed or distributed and again your distribution can be to uh, your target systems which could be like yeah I'm sending it to lambda function or send it to queue or send it to uh, topic uh, sms topic and and so on and so forth so these three are the main components, your source, event bus, and your subscribers are uh, the rules which simply route your message to the subscribers. Now, uh, it also has um, uh, a part of the configuration which is called a schema registry, where your sources can register their schema and, and that can be used for um, you know discovering your schema and then it provides a certain tight um, tight coupling and 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 and, and uh, what do you call that uh, um, code binding with the schema uh, we will cover that part later uh, because uh, uh, yeah i think that that topic needs its uh, its a separate attention uh, so I will try to create a separate exercise for that. But today we are going to understand how this uh, source to event bus uh, to the uh, subscriber part works in the event bridge. So 
what are we so this is the part we are going to focus today so what are you going to build today so what we're going to build today is that we will create one event boss here and then we will create uh, one client uh, which will be a uh, python code running in cloud9 which will uh, publish message to the event bus. Uh, it will, and then we will create certain uh, rules. Uh, two rules will be source based, and two rule will be uh, key based. Uh, I mean, like data database. So source based means based on the source of the event uh, message. Uh, we will route it to uh, two queues. So if uh, if the source is source one, route to the source one queue. If two, then route to the source two queue. And then we'll create two content-based routing. That means if they, based on certain content in the data, we will then route it to one queue or another. So this is what we are going to build today uh, in the uh, exercise. So in order to run this exercise, we have created uh, and published this exercise to the aws-dojo.com website. You can simply uh, follow the instructions over there. Uh, to uh, implement this scenario end to end and learn how uh, AWS event page uh, works. So you can do uh, the URL of this exercise has been provided in the YouTube uh, description uh, box below. Uh, but let me walk you through the steps of uh, this exercise anyway. So if I go to the uh, my website uh, aws dojocom you can see this exercise has been provided, which has got step-by-step uh, -step instructions. So let's let's follow the instructions. Uh, so the first step is you need to have an AWS account, and if not, you can uh, create some uh, trial account. Then we go and create this SQS uh, queues. So uh, you can see that there are four queues where we route the message depending on uh, your source or your data content. Uh, so in the second step, you simply go and create four queues. So you go and uh, uh, create four standard queue. So you can see that this four standard queue has been created. Okay, nothing nothing very fancy and tricky here. Simply four queues to demonstrate routing of the message based on source or content. Then we go ahead and create uh, event bus. So we go to the event bridge and uh, click on the event bus and then uh, we provide, um, you click on the create event bus button and then you simply provide um, uh, the name of the event. Now here you can see that when you're creating the event bus, actually you can really make it a trans organization, trans account. Right now I'm keeping it very simple, saying, hey, simply give, give access to the accounts within my organization. But literally you can make it um, an event bus where uh, the other organizations are also eligible or have access to, to publish messages to the other organization or other accounts also have uh, uh, authorization to publish messages to the event bus. You can you can do that as well. But right now we are keeping it uh, simple. Uh, keep this event bus uh, only for the, um, only for my organization, okay? Then uh, once my event bus has been uh, created, then we create event rules. So remember we are going to create four rules. Uh, two rules will be based on the source. And two rules will be based on the content of the message. So let's go and uh, so we again go to the event bridge, click on the rules, and say, okay, fine, I'm going to create a rule, uh, and we name it say Dojo Rule Source One. So here, uh, when uh, yeah, we we'll go and try to configure it, we are saying that okay. Uh, so you can schedule also, by the way, uh, if you want to uh, perform certain action based on the schedule. But here in this case, we want to make it based on the event, based on the message. So we are saying okay. I want to track based on the event, and uh, there's um, uh, so you can uh, I mean you can have predefined pattern by service also. So you can say that okay, uh, for this uh, for EC2 you know handle like that for um, say messages coming from say S3 handle like uh, handle handle like some other way. Uh, in this case, we are saying uh, let's use custom pattern, and all I'm saying is that if in my message the source is source one, okay so. Pretty straightforward. It has a it has, it has a, it's a way of mentioning the pattern, and if I'm saying this, my source is source one, then you know what? Simply uh, and and this is for this uh, Dozo event bus which we have created. Then you simply route this message to the SQS target SQS queue, and that queue name is uh, Dozo queue source one. So pretty straightforward. So message says that in this event bus. If my source is source one, name is source one, 
then simply route message to the source one queue. And similarly, we create another uh, another queue where we say um, uh, so another rule where we say if my message is from source two, then route it to the source two queue. Okay. So I'm not putting a, a screen over here, but I'm telling you what configurations are set. So we created two rules based on the source. Now we create two rules based on the context. And when I'm and here, I'm saying is that okay? I create one more rule saying that if the details section of the message contains the data. Okay. So we're saying that if the detail has um, has a key uh, as as the key, and the value starts with key one. So if uh, my data in the message has a key as one of the uh, like one of the key in my JSON document, and the value of that key starts with key one, then route that message to this particular key. So now this is the example of how you can do um, how you can do content-based message. Uh, now in this case, I'm looking at the prefix, but there are various other patterns to look into the content of the message. Key message here is that based on the content of the message also, you can define a rule to route your message or to consume your message in certain ways. Then we create another, uh, um, another rule where we say, if my message has got key, whose value is key two, then go to this key two queue. So all the, all the four rules we create like this over here, yeah? So once my rules are created, my event bits is ready. So my event bus is ready. My uh, my distribution or destination uh, queues are ready. My rules are ready. Now I need to create part of the work where I publish the message and test it. So for that, we are using Cloud9 environments, uh, Cloud9 environments. So in Cloud9, we start up a new environment using a T2 micro so that we don't, uh, we, we, we live under the uh, free trial account. Uh, I mean free, uh, free, free, uh, free uses, um, and then um, I am simply uh, installing Boto3 on that, so I can use Boto3 uh, SDK to talk to the event bridge. So my environment is ready. Now it's time to create the code, uh, the client. So I'm creating a new client, a client over here, and here's the client code. Client code is pretty straightforward. It is saying that hey, um, first create an event to the uh, so client to the event, and then this is the message I'm publishing. In this case, if you look at here, uh, just to give you an idea that this is uh, the source, you have to provide a source, uh, and then second most important thing is the details. Details contains your data, um, and uh, and in this case, since uh, I'm using source one, that means uh, I want to use it for source-based routing. I'm not really caring much on the data part, so I'm putting anything. Okay. Uh, and then this is the event bus where this message has to be published. So these three are most important thing, your data, your event bus, and your source. Now, uh, once you do that, we're simply putting the event and then printing the response just to see it is successful or not. So we save this file as an event source.py, and then we simply uh, run this file using say Python event source.py. And you can see that it has successfully passed. Now, Keep in mind, in this case, guys, that my source was source one. That means this message should have been routed to my source one queue. So once you run this thing, actually, uh, you, if you go back to your queues and go to the summary of the queues, you can see the messages here. You can see that in source one, one message has come because I just published the message and, then, and based on the source of the message, it simply routed my message to this particular queue. Now I go back to the code and make slight change. Uh, in this case, I'm saying I'm changing it to source two, okay? Very small change, the rest remains the same. And if I run this code again, you can see that, wow, my source two has got a new message because when this message got published, my rules executed, uh, my rules executed and then they simply routed the message to source two. So these are the examples of the source-based routing. Now we are going to do some database routing. So in this case, what we said, okay, let's make a small change. Let's keep source as source two. And this is going to be a little interesting, not that uh, complex, but yeah, interesting. And we are saying source is source two. 
And in detail, I'm saying my, I'm changing my data because I want to do content-based sorting. And in content, uh, if you remember, we created the rule that look for a key called key, and then if the value is key one or key two, then route the messages. So I'm changing the message saying, first message is key equal to key one. Now this is interesting because it is satisfying two rule because based on the source two, it should go to the queue source two. And based on the key equal to key one, it should go to the queue key one. That means this message will be kind of broadcasted and it will go to two destinations. First, it will go because of source source being source two, it will go to source two queue. And because the data has key equal to key one, it will also go to the key one queue. So when I go and run this, uh, this code again, after this making this small change, you can see that key one has got one message and source two has got another message because this message got distributed at two queues because of the two rules satisfying the message criteria. Uh, two rules criteria satisfying the message, sorry, <laughs> another way around. Um, now, if I go and make change again and, and keep it source two, just for the sake of it, I could have changed source one or something else. I mean, if I do source three, then I mean, there's no rule for source three. And then in that case, only uh, this rule will be applied. But I said, let's, let's make it a little, little interesting uh, so that you can see that message can be sent to multiple destinations as well. So I kept kept it source two. In this case, now I made a small change. I say key equal to key two. Now in this case, again, the message will be routed to two places, uh, source two queue. And because of the data being key equal to key two, it will also go to the key two queue. And if I run this code again, you can see that we have got one message into key two, plus this source two has got three messages now. So this was a good example and very clean example to show you that how you can use event base, a, a event uh, bridge to create an, uh, an a serverless event bus to be able to create a pub sub model where your messages can be published by your sources. And then those messages are then um, uh, handled by rule to distribute to one or more uh, destination. So that ends this exercise. And then the last step is to clean up the resources so that you don't uh, end up uh, no, uh, incurring any cost uh, post exercise, post exercise. So that was all about this exercise, guys. Hope you like it. And if you like, please click on the like button. Please subscribe to our channel. There are many other workshops and exercises like that in, in AWS. And, and please feel free to uh, yeah, explore those workshops and exercises to learn about uh, the AWS uh, services. If you have any questions or feedback, or um, if you want to talk about some new content, then please feel free to provide that into our uh, YouTube comment section, or you can also reach out to us through this contact as uh, tab to, um, uh, to, to send us the message. So that was all for today. Hope you like it. Uh, thank you very much for your time.